Welcome to the Rideshare Guy podcast, where you will learn about the rideshare and mobility industry straight from Harry Campbell, who's got over five years experience covering the industry and has talked to thousands of drivers. There's no better place to stay up to date, entertained, and educated. So let's dive in. Hey, this is Scott Lieberman with the Rideshare Guy. I'm joined by Wayne Lynn, co-founder and chief operating officer of Get Upside. Welcome. Thanks so much, Scott, for having me. So we're going to talk a bit about Get Upside. With Get Upside, consumers see their dollar go further on everyday purchases like gas and food, and on the merchant side, they get incremental profit. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Get Upside, if you haven't heard of it, it's at tens of thousands of locations all across the United States, and a bit of background about Wayne, prior to co-founding GetUpside in 2016, you worked at Opower and Google developing digital personalization technology. We'll get into that. Um, Wayne has degrees from Northwestern University in Economics, Applied and Applied Math, and an MBA from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. Okay, so let's talk about GetUpside, and there's so many cashback apps, so we'll talk on the consumer side first. What makes GetUpside better and different than all these choices people have? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, from my perspective, what makes GetUpside um, different and better than a lot of the other cashbacks out there um, is really kind of the focus of our company. And so when we started the company, we wanted to focus on areas that were uh, important things um, for people in their everyday lives. So we started with everyday spend categories. Um, so, so specifically for us, that's um, gas, uh, restaurants, and groceries. So it's the food you eat, and it's uh, the energy you need to get around. And so because of that, um, we are just much more um, uh, useful than in some ways um, some of the other apps out there because you can use us several times a month. Um, so that's part one. Part two is, um, you mentioned the word personalization. For us, what that really means is getting the right offer to the right user, um, the right offer to the right person at the right time, and really playing that balance between helping a merchant out and helping a consumer out. And so for us, for a consumer, where that helps is that the offers we're able to give, because they're personalized to you, um, they're two to four times larger uh, than other apps out there, kind of in our category. Um, and so because of that, people just have a lot more cash back that they can earn through us. Um, because one, it's some things that they do every day. And two, the, the amounts in, sort of the per, in terms of percentage is much higher. Okay, so from the consumer side, you, the number that's going to jump out at everyone is two to four times more, right? Like, oh, ka-ching. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about that, like what they can expect to see if they don't have that app? Yeah, so um, so in, in gas, you can see up to 25 cents a gallon cash back every time you use the app and fill up. Um, in uh, groceries, it's uh, it's up to roughly 10% or so of your entire grocery bill uh, you can earn cash back on. And in restaurants, it's up to uh, 30, 35% um, cash back um, every time you kind of buy a meal. Um, and so that's where I mean by two to four times higher is, yes, you might be able to get a 20 cent a gallon thing one time, right? But and you get it every single time you fill up. Uh, you know, I'm personally not aware of any other programs that, that can be that um, uh, can be that good for you. And for our super savers out there, you can like kind of stack this if you have a cashback credit card in one of those categories, right? You use the card and get upside together. Correct. And and um, yes, yeah, so you can stack us. And the reason for that is our business model is um, is a little bit different, right? So you're you're when you use a credit card and earn cash back or you're in points. Um, that's being funded for out of the credit card, right? The credit card company is paying for it through the interchange fees, so that percentage fee that you know you pay for the merchant pays uh, for credit card processing. For us, uh, we work directly with merchants um, themselves, so it's 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 not from the credit card company; it's from the business directly participating on GetUpside. What they're saying is, um, you know, hey consumer, uh, hey you know Scott, your your business is really valuable for me. Um, and I'm willing to share some of my profit to get to have you come do business with me because you are valuable. Yeah, so everyone is skeptical about these things, right? It's not magical money. Right? The stores want your business, so they're willing to give some of that to get upside who could pass it on to you, right? So let, Correct. let's talk about the, the, we have a lot of entrepreneurs who listen to this podcast, who watch on YouTube. So from the merchant point of view, how does get upside work? How is it better from, for other options to bring people into the store? Sure. So from a merchant point of view, um, how GetUpside works is we, for every merchant we work with, basically what we, we, we work with the merchant to do is to grow their business. And we grow their business in two ways. One is we help them bring, we help bring them new customers. Uh, and two, we help them uh, with existing customers to get existing customers to come more often. And the way we do that is through data and personalization. So 
Uh, for every uh, for every customer, you know, for every merchant we work with, uh, what we do is we integrate with their uh, credit card processing system. Um, and so through that, we don't get any personally identifiable data, but we basically get receipts. And through receipts, so this is data that's already out there, right? Like, uh, and and what's happening today when you, as a consumer, when you swipe your card, you're already giving that data to the merchant, and you're also giving it to the credit card networks. And so what the merchant is doing now is they're saying, hey, and what GetUpside is doing with our merchants is we're saying, hey, well, through that data, we can help you identify who's a new customer and who's an existing customer. And so if it's a brand new customer, you know, Scott, you know, let's say I run a coffee shop, and Scott, you don't, you've never been to my coffee shop. Well, today, running a brick and mortar business, I don't have that much data about you. If you walk into my store, uh, maybe I'll recognize you, right? But likely my staff is not that motivated to really recognize you and remember who you are and, and to try to do something special for you. But through data and, and, and software, we can say, hey, Scott, you've never been here before. I know I make 90% margin on a cup of coffee. How about this? First, you know, Scott, first time here, I'll give you, I'll give it to you for 50% off, right? I just, I love that you came here to try it. You really got to try this coffee. It's single origin, you know, uh, it's a single origin pour over. It's on, you know, it's on me, half price. You know, I'd love for you to try it um, instead of my regular cup of coffee and please come back again, right? Mm -hmm. That experience we can empower through data and that's what we're doing today. And, and, and that's how we help the merchant, right? Because so now you as a consumer, you just got something more, you know, your dollar went further. And for the merchant, the, you know, Wayne's Coffee Shop, I just help give a great experience to a new customer. And this data is really important because without that, what I would do is I would just blindly give away 50% off to everyone, including my existing customers who are happy to pay me full price. Right. And if you're happy, you know, if you're happy to pay me full price, like why would I give you half off? I'm just, I'm just making less money, which hurts my business. Right. So also, if I haven't gone back to the coffee shop, they can entice me and say, hey, don't you need some caffeine? Yeah. <laughs> Come on back. Exactly. Right? <laughs> it's like, hey, I, you know, I know uh, coffee's a great example here, right? It's like gas, um, uh, which is, hey, you know, as Americans, we drink a fair amount of coffee. We probably just don't sleep enough. Right. And it's like, hey, Scott, like I haven't seen you come in for a while. I know you have lots of choices of where to go buy coffee. I really think, you know, I would really love to earn your business. You haven't been here in a while. I'd love to give you an extra uh, incentive to get you to come. Uh, or, hey, Scott, like you used to come one time a month, uh, but I know you're probably drinking coffee more than one time a month. So what if I can get you to come to my coffee shop? Uh, what if I can make you your make you um, think of me as your your regular coffee shop, right? And you come in now once a week to get a cup of coffee. Right, those three additional visits a month, uh, in our language with merchants, that's incremental. Right, that's that's incremental business that you weren't already doing with that person. Now that now through a personalized incentive or offer, um, we can help convince um, you know Scott for you to come try out my you know to come like to my coffee shop a lot more often because I know yeah there's five other coffee shops you could go to. So using that example with GetUpside. I'm definitely familiar with a lot of the big chains who are participating. Can a local merchant sign up, or do you need to meet a certain threshold, or how does that work? Yeah, any um, any company can, uh, or any size company can sign up. Um, so when we built this company and when we founded it, um, one of the big things for us is, you know, you mentioned um, uh, a little bit of my background at the beginning of the call. Um, one of the things we we kind of really saw, at least I saw through my time at Google, was. Um, the power of technology to, to democratize access. Um, at Google, it was access to information. Uh, for here, we think about it as access to, um, to tools and um, toolkits that businesses can use to make themselves uh, more profitable, more successful. So when we built the company, we, weren't, we didn't build it to only work with large players. We, weren't, we built it to work with all types of businesses, all sizes. Um, and so in a lot of ways is because we want to make this, we think this is really, really valuable for businesses and for consumers, and we want everyone to be able to access it. Okay, cool. Oh, what I was thinking of, it's kind of like email lists. That's what I was thinking of. Like um, some small companies don't want to make an email list, so they don't have to. As a consumer, I don't want to sign up for like a hundred different stores, and like when they tell me and it gets lost in spam. Basically, I, one way I could look at it, get upside is, you're only going to tell me when I could save money, right? The important stuff. So it's almost like yep. a filter. So I could instead of like have being on fifty email lists, I'm on like one aggregator, and you tell me like when I'm going to save money at that exact time. Yeah, exactly. And and on top of that, um, email lists in some ways aren't that personalized or targeted, right? So um, one way to think about it is um, an, an advertisement or an offer is not. Um, oftentimes you think of it as like spam or junk mail or things like that, right? But it's not if it's valuable to you. Right? If it's valuable to you, then you actually want it, right? If you think about the best brands that you participate, you're on their mailing list for, well, you love the content they give you, you love the, the offers they might give you. And, and for us, 
um, by using personalization and finding that right like person to person or business to person connection, um, we can basically make these types of things more valuable for everyone. Because what for you you might say you know back to my coffee shop example, you know if you shop, sign up for Wayne's Coffee Shop email list, um, and I you know I'm probably not as sophisticated you know I'm just a guy that loves coffee that sells coffee right. I might be using my email list poorly and sending you a bunch of stuff you don't want, right? And then you're gonna unsubscribe versus through GetUpside, our system is working and learning to say, hey, Scott, you know, what's most valuable for you um, when you're thinking about Wayne's Coffee Shop? And then we we tailor our offers to, to bring it to make, to make it valuable for you. Right. That's cool. I mean, it could work for merchants that can't afford like an email marketer or they don't know how to do that or they're not that great at it. And then for consumers, it could be better because they only get the info they want. So let, let's talk a little bit about, um, you talking about personalization. This is kind of like a buzzword, so let's kind of see what you think the future is because it's getting there, it's getting there, and everyone says it's going to be personalized. We've heard this for like over a decade. So what do you see as the future of personalization with regards to, as I say, putting the right offers in front of the right people at the right time? So for me, um, the future of personalization is, um, and I've been in the space a fairly long time across the various different companies I've, I've worked at at this point, um, probably in the order of, 15 years or so. And I, th I think the future of it is traveling in a direction, and this is definitely kind of the path that we're on at GetUpside, which is um, early on when you, people started thinking about personalization, what happened was is really just segmentation at finer scale. So instead of, you know, segmentation typically is, oh, are you a male or female? Are you 18 to 24? Are you 25 to 34? Things like that, right? And then segmentation got finer and finer into smaller and smaller slices, but you still treat each slice the same. And then personalization tried to take that one more level to individuals, and it started saying, okay, well, now you are a, you know, you're a Scott, that's a male of some age, and I'm going to try to give you something. Um, and so, it, it, one, personalization is getting, getting finer and finer, now to the point where, through large data systems, we can actually do one-to-one -one level uh, personalization at scale. Uh, it was hard to do for a long time. It's getting easier because the technology and the computing systems are there. But thing two is then um, linking all of the components together. So you, in the, in, in the, as the industry evolved, it went from um, data, right? So data companies formed that provided insights at more and more granular levels. Then there were um, content companies that provided like emails that could be targeted and boxes that could be changed and personalized. And then there was measurement systems and targeting systems, right? But, but they were kind of standalone companies and you as a um, practitioner had to piece them together and try to use them. I think the future is these systems all coming together, and that's what GetUpside does. We have the data, we have the data streams and the data that we analyze. We have the targeting systems, we have the content creation personalization systems, and we have the measurement system to understand as you're personalizing and as you're giving unique experiences, like what's the outcome of it? And that full circle uh, is something that um, we're just starting to see fully come together. And when you look at the big tech companies. Um, they're usually acquiring their way into it, but when you acquire, they're not built from the ground up that way, right? You look at um, you look at Oracle. They have um, they buy they buy, they buy data analytics companies. They buy um, uh, email targeting, you know, email like CMS systems. They buy you know they buy these things, and you can bolt them together. But it's not ground up designed for this complete you know optimization. Right. So for the paranoid people out there, because I'm one of them, I used to think, oh no, they know everything about me. They're gonna know I love to get beef jerky at 11 p.m. and da 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 da. They're gonna figure <laughs> out, you know. But over time, I've come to kind of appreciate it because when an I think kind of like you said, when an advertisement isn't what you want, it's intrusive, it's annoying, you don't want to see it. But when the advertisement is actually something you feel is helpful, like I've been looking for that solution, then you kind of actually appreciate the advertisement, which sounds weird to say, but it is what you're looking for, right? So I want to just throw one kind of the opposite in there is, so with ultra personalization, you kind of end up with these echo chambers, like, because people don't know what they don't know. Like, so how do you mix in, I guess, in the right way, like products that people, they might not know they like unless they heard about it. Yeah, that's that's a great point. And, and, and obviously the statement you're making, um, especially in our current times, uh, you know, with all the Anyways, with all the stuff happening today, right, this week, um, with both the pandemic and now, uh, now around um, uh, social justice, uh, around Black Lives Matter, um, you know, this is a much, much broader issue And how do you get into, with personalization, how do you create these echo chambers that have much larger impacts than just what GetUpside is doing? Um, uh, so thank you for bringing up that, that point. Um, for us specifically, one is we are, um, you know, Thankfully, this is that's a very hard problem to solve, by the way. And thankfully, we're not in that space. Right. Um, but for us, personalization still does matter, right? And how do you not get into an, uh, 
in our case, it's less of an echo chamber, but more it's like, how do we, how do you not end up just narrowly into some area where like I could never get away from uh, very artisan coffees, even though sometimes I just want a Dunkin' Donuts, right? Like, and I can never get a Dunkin' Donuts coffee, right? Um, and for us, the way we handle it is um, is through is essentially through randomization. So, um, uh, so even if like the system, even if the system is suggesting that um, you know for you, Scott, what's best is and from your preferences is these certain things, we still have an element of randomness that comes in that tries to introduce different types of things to you to see what you might take. And I and I do believe a lot of these um, a lot of the other personalization systems out there also have that right because oftentimes you could end up. Um, we may have all experienced this watching YouTube. You end up in this YouTube hole where, like, you get more and more specific into, like, next thing you know, like, you start off. My son loves watching trains right now, mm-hmm. uh, videos of trains, and so you start off watching like just a normal video of a train, and the next thing you know, you're like deep down in a hole, like, of like I don't know, some antique train rebuilding video, <laughs> whatever it may be, right? And you're like, oh, it's been three hours, <laughs> right? That's a, that's an example of like these systems self-reinforcing too much, and you end up descending into this hole. Um, and I think the way to get out of that is to introduce randomness, kind of like um, in our everyday lives, right? Like you run into people serendipity, uh, serendipitous run-ins that like lead you to other points of view. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and again, like, GitHub is mainly focused on getting people discounts, so it's not quite that kind of a thing, but it's still cool to see like new products. Like I've, I've grown as a person, right? I don't want to just drink coffee anymore, so it's cool to have like yeah. different things come in. So let's talk about GitHub as a as a business a bit because it's been, at least from the outside looking in, awesome success. It only only started in 2016, and you know it's like everywhere, <laughs> um, yeah. and it's making an impact. So, let's talk about the flip side for entrepreneurs who want to know like the real thing. They're trying to start an app in some other category, whatever they're trying to do. What are some of the biggest challenges GetUpside currently faces? Because every business has challenges. You want to pretend like they don't, and then yep. you tackle them, and it feels great, and you grow, right? So, what is what is your team looking at right now? The current one, um, the current, I mean, the current one is, and is also the one that probably every business is facing right now, which is how do you, how do we adapt to this COVID-19 era that we're all in now? Um, and so that's the, that's the biggest, that's the biggest challenge that we're working through right now. Um, because one, uh, uh, immediately it's just the big question was we went from a world where being around each other, you know, as, as, as humans, we're all social beings that, and our workplaces are evolved to provide social contact. Um, uh, and which creates ideas and, and helps us work together. How do we go from that to all just only seeing each other on screens all the time? Um, and then on top, and even more importantly, how do we help our employees and our and our teammates be safe and healthy uh, in their lives? Um, so that was that was, so that was the first immediate challenge. And then and we've gotten through that and we're in a good spot um, with that. Um, and then it became oh my god, there's a ama- there's incredible economic destruction happening across the U.S. and the world right now. Um, and with that. Um, uh, actually, in some ways, it's made me even more passionate and also reinforced me even more the importance of what we're doing here at GetUpside, which is at the core, we are connecting consumers and merchants together, and we are helping consumers make their dollars go further, and we're helping merchants um, run their businesses and grow their businesses profitably. And as we come out of COVID, or as we adapt to COVID, because it's probably going to be around for a couple of years until there's you know herd immunity through vaccines or a treatment, um, um, how do like how do we help the 40 million Americans who have lost jobs where you know they money is tight and get upside helps you save money in your everyday things that you need so I think we immediately that the importance of that just went up and then secondly is as businesses reopen they need to reestablish their customers right or they need to find new customers and how do we do that in a world where many people are scared to leave their homes and so get upside being there and available for merchants to use as a tool to, to bring customers and grow customers is, is there and those are Kind of the biggest challenges for us is um, rising up to that the scale that we need to operate at to really do this for more and more people. Yeah, I think that's a great point. So I think like in a recession or really any time when the price of like staples, like your food you eat, the gas goes up in price, even if it's like a dollar, that's basically like a regressive tax, right? Rich people they're not going to feel a difference if you know the price of milk or meat goes up a little bit, whatever they're going to notice. But someone who's struggling to get by or out of work, that's like a basically a tax on living. So it really is important to find every discount you can and just be able to breathe a little easier and make life easier. So Yeah. And we've had um we've had some really uh um I guess 
it just reinforced to me like the, the value of the work we're doing. We've had some really like hard sto- basically stories we've heard of, of people that are heartwarming and also make you humble about what we're doing, which is our users have written in and said, hey, I did lose my job uh, and the 60 bucks that I had in my GetUpside account, you know, that really helped me out um, for the week. I was trying to figure out unemployment and everything just to make ends meet, right? And uh, you know, earlier on, and I, you know, when, when I would tell stories about how people would say, "Yeah, you know, I love the money I saved. It's like free money, and I treat my, treat myself to spa," you know, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, awesome! You know, you got you brought joy to your life. That's great, right?" And now some of the things people write into just tell us, like, "Hey, thank you. Um, I really needed that money. The meaning is just." kind of gone up at this point so yeah, yeah it makes me I would, what i do i would encourage everyone you know get upside just the whole idea of saving money first earn money but also when saving money is not just like the the 60 cents you save okay it's like a habit and it like really shows you the value of money how it adds i'm just it kind of makes you almost even if you're not someone who's going to budget it just makes you more aware and how easy it is now these days it used to be back in the day i remember when my mom and grandma would cut out this little coupon and they go <laughs> now it's like you just you don't do anything. You, you sign up for the app and it's, it's so easy. It's almost like no excuse not to just take that money that's there for you. So if you're going to be advertised to make some money off it, right? <laughs> yeah, and exactly. And actually, that's kind of one of the themes of our of our app in some ways is, um, look, your data is out there. People are using it, right? So do you want to be on Instagram where some, you know, Facebook's using it and, right. and targeting you with it? Or, and, you're, and what are you getting? You're getting ads. Um, or... Do you want to use GetUpside where you are opting in to use your data to now make money off your data? Right. So, uh, you know, and, and yeah, to your point, it's really easy to use. I got a few more for you. Um, so lots of people, I, again, there's a lot of entrepreneurs listening to this. A lot of people have ideas for making that killer app like GetUpside, but they don't know where to start. They don't know what mistakes to avoid. Can you give people kind of an important lesson you learned just along the way? Everyone has that, oh, if I only could do this, uh, what, what's something yeah. they should be aware of? Yeah, I think for us, um, and for me, the um, uh, two, maybe two lessons. Uh, there's been a, there's been like a couple of big ones, but two particularly stand out. Um, one is um, uh, a lot of people, and and you know when you when you read about doing startups and you actually get it, and then you get into actually doing one, um, people always talk about, hey, don't overbuild. Like, don't like it's all about speed and learning and and and, and the iteration cycles. And, off, and and it, you can kind of fall into this trap of saying, no, I have this idea. I just need to get it perfect. Like, I just need to build this perfect app, and then everyone will use it. And and um, and one thing we've learned and we've held ourselves to, which is oftentimes what you think is best and what you think is amazing, the world might not think, right, the same thing. <laughs> Some of them they might think, but many they don't. Right. And so really get it good enough and launch it and just get it out there and start talking to people and start getting feedback, right, and do that over and over. And, and that iteration cycle um, uh, is really important. And so... Not overbuilding, like calling it and going and then letting it out is, is really important. That's lesson one. Lesson two is um, once you do that, um, uh, and we face this at some points, I will say earlier in our cycle, you know, like our app, it's really easy to use. You open it, find an offer, claim it, make your purchase, um, print a receipt, snap a photo, get money. Uh, now we at, at 70% of our locations, you don't even need to snap a picture of a receipt anymore. You just swipe your card and we detect the transaction. It's pretty easy. And uh, one of the thing, problems I fell under in this world is where our app is easy to use, but people are still doing it wrong. And for a long time, I thought, why are these users so stupid? Why can't they figure out? Like, why can't they just read the app? There's only four steps. Just read the four steps. Like, what is wrong with you? And a lesson here I learned is, um, the customer is always right. Your user is always right. So if they can't figure it out, that's not on them. That's on me. That's on me knowing, needing to do more work to do my homework to build a better app so that they can use it. Because if they're not getting it, that's not their problem. That's my problem because I'm not building it easy enough. And that's that's a lesson I've really taken to heart is to not – it's any any problem we see, it's on it's on us. And it's, it makes something – it's under it's, – it's on us to go solve versus just blame the outside world. Right. So I'm going to summarize that into two – important lessons for entrepreneurs out there are going to do their killer at one don't try to get it perfect get it out there and learn 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 adjust 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 it's not going to be perfect because you might create the perfect thing and then no one likes it right so yeah you got to see what people like and then the second point i think is a great one is that you know hey like people like when we're in our world like oh we got it it's so easy but like other people this is not the center of their world it's like oh it's another thing so it has to be almost like dead simple Otherwise, it's, yeah. not, then it's like that barrier to learning it and they're not going to do it. So the easier you make it to learn, 
they'll t- people will tell you by their actions, right? So. Yeah, and that's a great point, right? Like, you're, that's a great point you make. I might think my thing is the center of the world because I think about it all the time, but to everyone else, they probably don't care about it that much. <laughs> <laughs> they just want it to work, right? Work simply. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I think I had, oh, two more real quick ones. How can enterprise and gig economy folks who listen to this, how can they earn money themselves promoting GetUpside? Because you have a great uh, yeah. referral program. That's a, that's a great, that's a, thank you for bringing that up. Um, so yeah, we, we have a we have an amazing referral program. Um, uh, we've actually heard from many enterprise and gig um, uh, economy folks about how good it is, especially relative to other um, apps out there. I think we pay out more than many, many other apps from a, from a referral basis. So our referral program is really simple. Uh, it works, it's, it, but it's two part. So part one is um, you refer friends and family, and for everyone you refer, um, they get a bonus for signing up, and then you get a bonus as well. That's pretty standard. But the second part is then um, we have a, uh, so every time you refer your friends, every time they buy gas or they eat out or they buy food, you get a, you basically get a small kickback. So you'll earn a percentage off of their, uh, off their usage of the app. Um, and so, and then if they refer friends, there's a second degree as well. So uh, sometimes people say, hey, is that a pyramid scheme? And we say, well, it's a very, very small one. It's a two level one. It's not, no one's getting rich off of it. We're not claiming you're gonna become a millionaire. But, but hey, like you tell, I mean, this is something that's great for everyone, right? You're not, I'm not, you're not trying to sell them something that's not useful. You're just saying, hey, you buy gas, you eat, like there's great places you can make your money go further. And, by the, and then you at, they say, a lot of our um, like, you know, economy folks say this, they say basically you make money in your sleep. You wake up in the morning and you have like 25 more cents because someone you referred bought gas yesterday. Yeah, just to clarify, a pyramid scheme is when like no legit product is being sold you only make money off signing someone else up. This is not that. <laughs> it's a very legit, <laughs> legit app, and you're helping people save money. And basically, you guys are incentivizing people by not only with what you spend, but with your, you know, sign up person spend. So, yeah. Just <laughs> and, and our mentality behind that is, um, yeah, it's it's a legit product. We are helping people save money. We're helping businesses earn more money. It's I think you've all, you know all all the listeners out there, you've heard our business model. It's, it's real. Um, and behind that, uh, the reason that we do this for referral is. No, look, we'd rather give you, every company does marketing to grow, right? But we'd rather we'd rather grow through word of mouth and through you, the, the users, um, uh, than, uh, than, than pay, uh, you know, paid media to some large media company to, to get the word out there. Right. And last one for you. What are you most proud of in this whole journey with GetUpside so far? Yeah, uh, it's been, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, I will say it's probably been the most fulfilling thing I've done in my career. So for those thinking about entrepreneurship and trying things, um, uh, uh, I mean, I would I would encourage it, and I would uh, you know if if you're up for it, um, it is not easy. So you need to definitely need to have the mental fortitude and be prepared for tough times. But um, but it can also easily be. I mean, I guess it's like having children. It's not easy, but it's it can be. It's also very very rewarding. Um, and so the thing I'm most proud of is um, is one um, I alluded to it earlier is the impact we've had. So especially now with COVID, with unemployment, with businesses being destroyed, um, we've helped give tens and tens of millions of dollars in cash back and profit um, back to uh, consumers and also to the merchants we work with. And for many of these merchants, they're small businesses, and so every dollar of profit we bring them that literally goes straight into their family's bank account. Um, that they that's you know how. They're, they pay, you know, they live their life. So that's that's made me extremely proud. Uh, the second one then is is um, just the the team of people that have kind of gathered to work on this. And so it's one thing to say, um, you know, I, our founding team was six people. So it's one thing to say, hey, the six of us, you know, we've had some good successes in life. So you know, we we can go off and we can take the risk, go start a company together. You know, we're, we are very lucky and privileged in that way. Um, so that's one thing, and to put yourself on the line. But then it's the second when. Uh, we're, our company is about 140, 150 people now, um, and it's the second thing to when when you know 100 plus people have joined you in that mission, and now their careers and their aspirations um, are kind of in this together, and and that's also just something I'm really proud of is that people believe in us, people believe in the mission, and we've had kind of great success helping businesses and merchants all at the same time, or businesses and consumers at the same time. Well, thank you. This is a lot of fun. So everyone, yeah. thanks Wayne. Everyone check out Get Upside and check out the app. Great. Thanks so much, Scott.